When it comes to street food, I have high standards. I've been to countries like Korea and Thailand where street food reigns supreme. Arriving in Lima, Peru, I wasn't sure what to expect. Well, I can honestly say I was pleasantly surprised. Peruvian street food is some of the best in all of Latin America. In fact, one cannot really say they've sampled Peruvian cuisine without trying favorites served up on street corners. Some of the Peruvian street food we tried includes churros, picarones, turon, tejas, cremoladas, alfajores, and chicha morada, to name just a few. If you've got a sweet tooth, you'll find your taste buds are in heaven over here. The following is our Peruvian food guide to the best street food in Lima. So today we are on a food mission. We are looking for a place called Manolo's and we're going to be eating some churros. Let's go eat! journey now the other half is gonna be eating it and here we are Manolo so we went all out here and got one of each so this is the one with chocolate vanilla and dulce de leche talk Think about all three talk for about myself. a trio I just know. for me so in case you've never tried churros before, it's just a deep fried dough with like a, a hole in the middle. So I guess you can fill it up with something really sweet and tasty. Um, so the one I'm having right now has dulce de leche. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's warm and gooey and sweet. So you think it's nice and that's fresh amazing. out of the oven? Oh, it definitely is. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. The decisions I have to make in life. Okay, I'll go with chocolate. Mm. His eyes are closed. That's a good sign. You're totally right about it being like freshly made. Like I can taste the, the warm gooiness of that chocolate inside. You're not getting a bite of that. <laughs> Not least, vanilla. Mm. It's like a vanilla pudding, or like the filling you get inside the Boston cream donuts. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. I still think I like this one better though. Do the leche? It's my number one. delicious snack and it wasn't very expensive at all. I lost my receipt but I think I paid somewhere near 12 soles which would be around four dollars for those three very tasty and very sweet churros. Highly recommended. So seriously it's probably a good idea that we're walking home right now. I honestly could have had about five more of those dulce de leche churros and we've got more food videos coming soon. Hello there! So this afternoon we are at Parque Kennedy and we are here for some dessert. We've been eating like pigs all day long but there's still a bit of room left for a little something sweet so we're gonna go try picarones. have a bee following me because of the honey. Isn't that amazing? Whoa. And we thought about getting two orders? <laughs> this will be plenty. Alright, so here we have our dessert. These are picarones and they are like fried rings, fried dough made with sweet potato 
and pumpkin, and they have a sweet honey drizzled all over. And they're uniquely Peruvian cuisine. Oh yes. So I'm just gonna go for it and take a bite. Dig right in. Mmm. These are so fresh. Wow. Really fluffy and airy. Can you taste that honey? Oh yeah. I sure can. I'm like, they're so light. I've already finished half of one and I understand why they give you five. You can just devour them in a few minutes. And we've got a guest who's interested as well. Hi kitty. Hello, Mr. Meowsers. So as I mentioned previously, this is a uniquely Peruvian dish. And as such, there isn't an English equivalent. I suppose we could call it a Peruvian donut with honey. And so that's what we're going with. And this is my first bite, my first time to ever try this. So I'm really excited. I am sopping it up in honey. Woohoo, honey syrup. Let's try this. Oh my gosh. So good. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me like of a of an oversaturated waffle with maple syrup or honey where it's like where you pour like three times as much as you actually need on on the waffle and then you eat it. This is what it tastes like right here. Mmm. I don't mess around when I eat food. What can I say? So this tasty dessert only cost us five soles. That would be one sol for each donut that we've already eaten. Um, and that's pretty affordable actually. With the exchange rate, it would be about a dollar seventy-five, and you do get a lot of food for that. So if you're looking to pair this sweet treat with uh, with a little beverage, you can get something called chicha, which is a purple corn juice that goes perfectly with it. So there are five of these, but there's only two of us. So who gets that third one? We split it down the middle, Sam. Oh, I don't agree with that. Hundreds of cats in this park. Look, here's another one. Meow, meow. That was a delicious sweet treat, and we're gonna be back at this park again very soon to film some more street food. and then it's topped with like a, a juice or a syrup that has like a, a tropical fruit flavor. So I've chosen chicha morada, which is a purple corn, and Sam over here has chosen lucuma. So we're gonna be trying these. This Very is local snack. flavors, oh, very yeah. much so. It's just mixing it around, ice cold. Purple goodness. Ready for my first bite, this is purple corn. Doesn't taste like corn, tastes more like syrup. <laughs> Purple syrup? Mm. Yeah, like what would you call this back at home? Uh, is that like a kind of a, it looks a bit a like slushy. a slushy. It looks like a slushy. There you go, it's a slushy. So I'm having a purple corn slushy. Do you actually like it? So so? Yeah, I mean it's ice, flavored ice. It's okay. What can I say? <laughs> so I've got something called lucuma, and it's a local fruit which I've kind of fallen in love with since being in Peru. 
I mean, you can't really describe what a fruit tastes like. Uh, a mango tastes like a mango, a peach tastes like a peach, and a lucuma tastes like a lucuma. So let's try it here. It is definitely sweet. It has that sweet tropical taste though, I can say that. This one seems really thick. I really like that. Um, I have a feeling that mine is quite a bit thicker than yours. If you just look down at it here, you can see that it's really, it's really thick. Mm -hmm. And you can really taste the fruit. It's definitely been sweetened, but it's not overpowering. Uh, the fruit taste really comes out, so I'm actually really enjoying this right now. So it's nothing out of the ordinary, but if you're in Lima on a really hot day, this is definitely a very refreshing little slushy drink. And in terms of cost, those buses. In terms of cost, it was five soles and 70 cents, which is less than $2, so not a bad deal. It's actually kind of getting chilly here, so I'm cold eating this. I can't believe you're wearing a sweater. I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts, and I think this is perfect weather. So it's time to get back home before Audrey suffers from hypothermia. You know, it's only like 25 degrees outside or something. Pish posh, it must be like 18 and I'm freezing. So this afternoon we are at the Love Park here in Lima and we're going to be doing yet another taste test. We're trying something that is called Dejas and Choco Dejas. And this is a dessert that comes from Ica, and there's two different varieties. So first up, we're going to be trying Dejas, which is a sweet. The exterior is covered in white sugar, and then the inside has something called Manjar Blanco, which is similar to Dulce de Leche, which is like, which is like a, a milky caramel. It's really sweet. Um, and some of them are filled with nuts, filled with different fruits. So we're going to try one. So I'm first up here with the Pecan Tejas. You can see over here, Pecanas. And I think according to you, this should be white. It should be. It oh, should be wow. coated in it white sugar. Wow. It's almost, it's got that like um, sliminess. Oh my gosh, I'm getting my hands on I think that's because I put it in the fridge. It really shouldn't be slimy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh my gosh. That is so sweet. Tasty. Show us what it looks like. Mm. Just loaded with sugar. It's almost like it's almost like eating icing with caramel inside and nuts, of course, pecans. Mmm, I really like this. So next up, I'm trying uh, chocoteja. So unlike Sam's, which was coated in white sugar, the chocoteja is actually coated in chocolate, like the name suggests. And this one is lemon flavored. And you know what? It's a different shape. Yeah. It's more like a. Looks like more the like unveil. Da, 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 da. Dun, 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 dun. Let's take a bite. Mm. I was expecting it to be really sour because of the lemon, but it's really not. It's still really sweet, so you have the, the manjar blanco, which is the, the caramel. Just gonna zoom in on that. And oh, then perfect. you can kind of see the lemon. It's like the, the lemon skin, and they've turned it into a kind of marmalade. And yeah, it's not sour at all. This is great. Mm. I like it. So next up, I'm having chocolate tejas called mani. And mani means peanuts, so I'm excited about this one. Um, just judging by uh, touching it right now, this one's even slimier than the okay, one before. Okay, it was in the fridge! <laughs> Whoops. So, just trying to break that off so I don't have any paper on it. And again, this isn't even, this, this shape is different from the two we've tried previously. Mm -hmm. So, I like my peanuts, so I have high expectations. Oh, man. Oh my god. Snickers bar on steroids. That's like so, so tasty. Really good quality chocolate. And just a massive, generous amount of caramel. And then you, you got the great big peanuts that I'm biting into too. So I mean, this for me is about as close as it gets to being a perfect chocolate bar. And last but not least, we have one called Chocoteja Pasas Borrachas. 
and pasas borrachas means drunk raisins, so I'm assuming they've been soaked in some kind of wow. alcohol. We like our drunk so food. Let's unveil. We sure do like our drunk food. <laughs> there we have it. Okay, so it's, it is chocolate covered. Mm -hmm. mm. Haven't found any raisins yet. No drunkenness? No raisins. Oh, okay, at the bottom. Show me. I think there's like some kind of raisin paste. Oh no, there's a raisin! Show me. Where is there's it? There's the raisin. <laughs> oh, we found it. Discovered there the raisin. We go. So you gotta take a bite with the raisin now. Mm. Come on. Do it properly. Mmm, that's a drunk raisin for sure. Yeah. That's been soaked in the like alcohol. Like drunk for a drunk long time. Partying all night long raisin? I would say so, yeah. Really good. I think this is actually my favorite one so far. Alright, to wrap things up, what I really liked about those was that each and every one was really unique and different, not only in shape but in taste and, and texture. Um, some of them reminded me of fudge, whereas others reminded me more of like eating like a chocolate turtle. And in terms of pricing, each of those cost three soles and 50 cents, so perhaps a little pricey for a small treat, but it was gourmet chocolate with the best of ingredients. Now to take footage of the guy on the tightrope. So we thought we were going to be ending that video with the food, but we've got some paragliding to show you. Park once again. This is Parque Kennedy and we are here for dessert. What else? So today we are going to be sampling something that's called turron. So part of the reason we like coming here are all the cats. There must be hundreds of them and they're so friendly. They just want to be scratched and petted. Look, there's another one coming out right behind you. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, cat. Look at you. You're a sweet one. You're still a kitten. Oh, it's sitting on me. I've made a new friend. <laughs> Hi, cat. Hello, cat. What have you got over here? Okay, so we ended up getting two different things. This is called turron. And over here, oh my goodness, it already got stuck to my leg. This giant thing over here is called torreja. So they look kind of different, but they're both actually made with the same ingredients. So all this is, is deep fried flour, and then they drizzle honey over top. So, <laughs> Sounds good enough to me. Yeah, let's try it. The first bite. The first Ready bite. for the big moment. Here we go. Oh, uh -oh. Whoa, it looks sticky. Oh my gosh. I think you bit off a little more than you can chew there. Mm. This is interesting. I'm getting stuck to my teeth. <laughs> mm. 
a little difficult to talk right now, but the honey kind of has an orange flavor to it. And also it's a lot stickier than honey. I wonder if it's more of a marmalade, kind of an orange marmalade. Mm. You think maybe? Maybe. They told me honey, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no honey for the bunny. Mmm. It's nice, really crispy. Um, the dough itself isn't really very flavorful because, I mean, it's just flour. But the honey, that's what you can taste. The orange flavored honey. Wanna have some? Alright, it's my turn. Oh, you can take a bigger bite than that. I don't want to get all that sticky stuff all over my face. We don't have any napkins out here. This probably looks more like french fries with like ketchup drizzled all over them. But in fact, this is the second dessert we're going to be trying. And I've noticed since we've come to Lima that cakes and other things tend to have these little, these little doughy bits, crunchy doughy bits. And so let's, uh, let's try it here. Like, I don't see myself like breaking it off with my hand. I'm just going to take a, a bite. Mmm. 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 That is good. You know what? I think I actually prefer this one to the big uh, pizza shaped one we had. <laughs> <laughs> Similar flavor to the previous one. Yeah, more or less um, the same thing. Just kind of slightly different. You know what? It kind of tastes like Fruit Loops. <laughs> when you really chew on it for a while, it's like really sugary Fruit Loops. Maybe that's why we like it so much. We grew up eating Fruit Loops. Yeah. Fruit Loops, guys. Fruit Loops. Peruvian Fruit Loops. <laughs> so, how much did today's dessert cost? Well, this was probably our cheapest street food slash dessert that we've had since we've come to Peru. Um, this one came to three soles each. So that's a dollar for each of those uh, delicious little snacks we had. So, you know, if you're on a budget, you can really load up on those. So we're just gonna go for a little walk around the park and then we're gonna head home for more food. What else? All we do is eat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, look at that. You're a cute one, aren't you? Oh, it's purring. I can feel it purring. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. to be trying something called alfajores and this is something that you can find throughout South America but it varies from country to country. So today we're having Peruvian alfajores. So I'm going to open the box for a big reveal and yeah. we've ordered a few different varieties. Wow that looks awesome. We're very it's used super to tasty. we're very used to the Argentinian ones. Yeah. So what I found particularly fascinating upon researching alfajores is that it has Arabic origins. Then it made its way to Spain and now it's become immensely popular all over South America. Right, so this is the original which I'm going to be trying first. So it's basically two layers of a crumbly cookie. Let's zoom it in has, on that. Zoom in. It has manjar blanco in the middle which is kind of like dulce de leche. It's a milk caramel. It's very sweet. And then it has um, like a white powdery sugar, like icing sugar on top. Looks like a very generous amount of the dulce yeah. de leche. So this is a miniature version of the original alfajor and it's what I'm trying first. Bite size. Mm. Those are really nice. Up to standard? Mm. Nice and sugary. I think it would be nice for breakfast or for a little snack. Heck, maybe even dinner. <laughs> I could see you eating that for dinner. Mm. You like your sweets. It's really nice. 
All right, and I'm also gonna have the original one. And Alpha Hori's kind of have a special place in my heart because during our wedding, one of the things we made together as a family with Audrey's family is a huge batch of Alpha Hori's, which we ate, of course, and shared to our guests. So uh, high expectations here, and it does have uh, some positive memories for me as well. Mm, one big bite. It's pretty good. Okay, so I'm interested in having this one next because it looks like chocolate. Let's hold that up. Let's zoom in. Oh yeah, it's got a chocolate layer, I think. Oh, you need it. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what the filling is. Do you think it might be a dark fruit of some kind? Yeah. Maybe like a um, not a plum, but a a date. Do you think maybe I a think, date filling? No, it's chocolatey. I think maybe they took the the manjar blanco that we had for the other one and just added some chocolate and mixed it together. That would be my guess. And the cookie is chocolate. How does it compare to the original? I think I prefer the original personally. But this is nice as well. It's very tasty. And mysterious. So you got a little excited about the next one. Well, we were shooting a photo for maybe the cover photo image of this video and I just got a little carried away. I was just planning on having my teeth on it, but my brain, my subconscious brain took over and it basically forced me to have a bite. Okay, first unofficial bite over here. Mm. Yeah, that's um, that's really nice. It reminds me of the original Alpha Horn, but the big difference here is it has a frontier exterior. And if you see over on this side, it's covered what what appears to be walnuts. Hmm. How about the cookie dough? Does it also have nuts? Is it crunchy? Um, yeah, it's it's definitely it's crunchier than the original one, which is more like a thin thin cookie. Right, and then we are down to one, the one and only lonely one. So it's my turn. I believe this one has honey. That's what I was told. Looks sticky. And it looks very. Oh. Oh my gosh! Look at that. Ooh, okay, it's like a triple one. So triple layered alfajor. Dude, it's spilling all over the place. Mm. Let's get a really good zoom in on that. Like that mm -hmm. is just, whoa, that is some serious, serious uh, <laughs> topping overflow there. Mm -hmm. And the taste? Well, that's not your average honey, that's for sure. It's, it's really thick and sticky. Um, I've had it in a few other like Peruvian desserts, but I still don't know what it's made out of. Yeah, it has a stronger flavor than regular honey. Would you care to have a bite and, and tell me your thoughts? Maybe you can decipher the great mystery. All right, the things that Audrey makes me do, the things I do in front of the camera. Oh my gosh, just kidding, this is awesome. First bite here. Oh, oh my, oh my. <laughs> Probably should have had a smaller bite. Yeah, that that kind of reminds me of the of the Tyrone sauce honey. I have a feeling that maybe it's mixed with some kind of date, or possibly it's a kind of marmalade because it, yeah, it just doesn't have a pure honey taste in my opinion. So we picked up this little goodie box from La Casa del Alfajor, which translates to the House of the Alfajor. And uh, yeah, it was a great little goodie box, but um, I guess what sort of surprised me was that I ended up liking the original the most. How about you? Same, love the original. So I guess the take home message for today is don't mess with that awesome, classic, good flavor.